Hi there. It's this day 150 of Through the Bible in One Year. Getting there today, they have us reading a couple of chapters out of First Kings and something in First Chronicles, and then they threw a psalm in there too. So let's get to it. <clears throat> The Lord appears to Solomon. Solomon made an alliance with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, by marrying Pharaoh's daughter. Solomon brought her to the city of David until he finished building his palace, the Lord's, the Lord's temple, and the wall surrounding Jerusalem. However, the people were sacrificing on the high places because until that time a temple of, for the Lord's name had not been built. Solomon loved the Lord by walking in the statues of his father David, but he also sacrificed and burned incense on the high places. The king went to, to Gibeon to sacrifice there because it was the most famous high place. He offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, ask, what should I give you? <clears throat> hmm, this is the good part. And Solomon replied, you have shown great and faithful love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, righteous, and integrity. You have continued this great and faithful love for him by giving him a son to sit on his throne as it is today. Lord my God, you have now made your servant king in my father David's place, yet I am just a youth with no experience in leadership. Your servant is among your people you have chosen, a people too many to be numbered or counted. So give your servant a receptive heart to judge your people and to discern between good and evil. For, for who is able to judge this great people of yours? Yeah, for wisdom, right? <laughs> now it pleased the Lord that Solomon had requested this. God said to him, because you have requested this and did not ask for long life or riches for yourself or the, or the death of your enemies, but you asked for discernment for yourself to administer justice. I will therefore do what you have asked. I will give you a wise and understanding heart so, so that there has never been anyone like you before or never will be again. You got that? Never will be again. He was the wisest man who ever lived. <clears throat> In addition, I will give you what you did not ask for, both riches and honor, so that no king will be your equal during your entire life. If you walk in my ways and keep my statutes and commands, just as your father David did, I will give you a long life. Mm -hmm. Then Solomon woke up and realized it had been a dream. He went to Jerusalem, stood before the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, and offered burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Then he held a feast for all his servants. <clears throat> Solomon's wisdom. Now it begins. There were two. Then two women who were prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. One woman said, Please, my lord, this woman and I live in the same house, and I had a baby while she was in the house. On the third day after I gave birth, she also had a baby, and we were alone. No one else was with us in the house. Just the two of us were there. During the night, this woman's son died because she laid on him. Wow. She got up in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while your servant was asleep. She laid him in her arms and put her dead son in my arms. When I got up in the morning to nurse my son, I discovered he was dead. That morning, when I looked closely at him, I realized that he was not the son I gave birth to. No, the other woman said, <clears throat> My son is the living one. Your son is the dead one. <clears throat> and the first woman said, No, your son is the dead one, and mine is the living one. So they argued before the king. The king replied, This woman said, This is my son who is alive, and your son is dead. But that woman says, No, your son is dead, and my son is alive. <clears throat> the king continued, Bring me a sword. So they, brought the, so they brought the sword to the king, and the king said, Cut the living boy in two and give half to one and half to the other. The woman whose son was alive spoke to the king because she felt great compassion for her son. My lord, give her the living baby, she said, but please don't have him killed. But the other one said, he will be mine. He will not be mine or yours. Cut him in two. Well, the king responded, give the living baby to the first woman and don't kill him. She is his mother. All Israel heard about the judgment the king had given, and they stood in awe of the king because they saw that God's wisdom was in him to carry out justice. Yeah, that's a famous, famous story. <clears throat> Very smart. King Solomon reigned over all Israel, and these were his officials. Here we go with the names again. Azariah, son of Zodak, priest. Elahoreph and Ahijah, the sons of Shisha. Jehoshaphat, son of Abahud, Ahilud, yeah, right, court historian, Benaniah, son of Jehadaid, 
in charge of the army. Zodak and Abiathar priest, Azariah, son of Nathan, in charge of the deputies, Zabud, son of Nathan, priest and advisor to the king, Ahishar, in charge of the palace, and, and Adoniram, son of Abda, in charge of forced labor. He had slaves. Solomon had twelve deputies for all Israel. They provided food for the king and his household. Each one made provision for one month out of the year. These were their names. Ben-Hur, you heard of him? <laughs> the hill country of Ephraim. Ben-Desek, Makasheba, these names. All these guys. See, this just names. Eleven more names or names. Half the daughter of Solomon was his wife. Benan, son of Alahu, Names, names, names. Ben Geber, villages, Manasseh, Gilead, near the region of Argoth, and Basha, 60 great cities with walls of bronze bars. Ahinadab, son of Edo, and Manaz, had married the daughter of Solomon. Benaz, son of Hashu, and Asher, via Jehoshaphat, Elah, and Benjamin. Geber, yeah, all those guys. There was one deputy in the land of Judah. <coughs> Solomon's provisions. Judah and Israel were as numerous as the sand by the sea, and they were eating, drinking, and rejoicing. Solomon ruled all the kingdoms from the Euphrates River to the land of the Philistines. As far as the border of Egypt, they offered tribute and served Solomon all the days of his life. Solomon's provisions for one day were 180 bushels of fine flour, 360 bushels of meal, 10 fattened cattle, 20 range cattle, and 100 sheep and goats, besides deer, gazelles, roebucks, and pen-fed poultry. Wow. For one day, he had a lot of people to feed. For he had dominion over everything west of the Euphrates, from, from Tifsa to Gaza, and <clears throat> over all the kings west of the Euphrates, he had, he had peace on all his surrounding borders. Throughout Solomon's reign, Judah and Israel lived in safety from Dan to Beersheba, each person under his own vine and his own fig tree. Solomon had 40,000 stalls, 40,000 stalls of horses for his chariots and 12,000 horsemen. Wow. Each of those deputies for a month in turn provided food for King Solomon and for everyone who came to King Solomon's table. They neglected nothing. Each man brought the barley and the straw for the chariot teams and the other horses to the required place according to his assignment. Remember Solomon was the richest king that ever lived, so because God told him he would be, right? <clears throat> God gave Solomon wisdom, very great insight and understanding as vast as the sand on the seashore. Solomon's wisdom was greater than the wisdom of all the people of the East, greater than all the wisdom of Egypt. He was wiser than anyone, wiser than Ethan and Ez the Ezraite and Heman and Coco, Darda, sons of Mahal. His reputation extended to all the surrounding nations. Solomon spoke 3,000 proverbs and his songs numbered 1,005. Now, he spoke about trees from the cedar of Lebanon to the hyssop growing out of the wall. He spoke about animals, birds, reptiles, and fish, emissaries of all people sent by every king on earth who had heard of his wisdom came to listen to Solomon's wisdom. Now, I've been studying Proverbs for nine months now, getting ready to start the tenth time through it. I don't know that there's 3,000 and 1,005 songs. Hmm. Wow. I'd like to read some of those. So, there's that. Now, Chronicles. Some of these say the same things, only differently, okay? Different people wrote them. So then we're going to read it all over again in the Chronicles version. <clears throat> Solomon said of David, strengthened his hold on his kingdom. The Lord gave, the Lord God was with him and highly exalted him. Then Solomon spoke to all Israel, to the commanders of the thousands and of hundreds, to the judges of every leader of all Israel, the family heads. Solomon and the whole assembly was with him went to the high place. That was in Gibeon because God's tent of meeting, which the Lord's servant Moses had made in the, in the wilderness, was there. Now David had brought the ark of God from that place to the place he had set up for it because he had pitched a tent for it in Jerusalem. But he put the bronze altar with which Bessel sent of Urien and Herod made in front of the Lord's tabernacle. Solomon in the assembly inquired of him there. Solomon offered sacrifices there to the Lord's presence and on the bronze altar at the tent of meeting he offered a thousand burnt offerings on it. 
the house had burned off. Well, that night, God appeared to Solomon and asked him, "What should ask? What should I give you?" <clears throat> Solomon said to God, "You have shown great and faithful love to my father David, and have made him king in this place. Lord God, Lord God, let your promise to my father now, David now come true, for you have made me king over a people as numerous as the dust of the earth. Now grant me wisdom and knowledge, so that I may lead these people." For who can judge this great people of yours? All right, wisdom and knowledge. God said to Solomon, Since this was in your heart, and you have not requested riches, wealth, or glory, or for the life of those who hate you, and have not even requested long life, but you have requested for yourself wisdom and knowledge, that you may judge my people over whom I have made you king. Wisdom and knowledge are given to you. I will also give you riches, wealth, and glory, unlike what was given to the kings who were before you. Or will, or will be given to those after you. See, God said he would be the richest king that ever lived. Right? So Solomon went to Jerusalem from the high place that was in Gibeon in the front of the tent of meeting, and he reigned over Israel. Solomon's horses and wealth. Now, these numbers might be a little different than the last ones. <clears throat> Solomon accumulated 1,400 chariots and 12,000 horsemen, which he stationed in the chariot cities in the king with the king in Jerusalem. The king made silver and gold as common in Jerusalem as stones. <laughs> wow. And he made cedar as abundant as sycamore in the Judean foothills. Solomon's horses came from Egypt and Kew. The king's traders would, would get them from Kew at the going price. A chariot would be imported from Egypt for 15 pounds of silver and a horse for nearly four pounds. In the same way, they exported them to all the kings of the Hittites and the kings of Aram through their agents. Through their agents. Tell there you go. Numbers are a little different. Now, Psalm 72. A Song of Solomon. There we go. A prayer for the king. God give your justice to the king and your righteousness to the king's son. He will judge your people with righteousness and your afflicted ones with justice. May the mountains bring may the mountains bring well being to all the to the people and the hills righteousness. May he vindicate the afflicted among the people, help the poor, and crush the oppressor. May they fear you while the sun endures as long as the moon throughout all generations. May the king be like rain that falls on the cut grass, like spring showers that water the earth. May the righteous flourish in his days and, and well-being abound until the moon is no more. May he rule from sea to sea, from the Euphrates to the ends of the earth. May desert tribes kneel before him and his enemies lick the dust. May the king of Tarshish and the coast of Inlands bring tribute to the kings of Sheba and Seba, offer gifts, let all kings bow in homage to him, all nations serve him, for he will rescue the poor who cry out and the afflicted who have no helper. He will have pity on the poor and helpless and save the lives of the poor. He will redeem them from oppression and violence, for their lives are precious in his sight. May he live long. May gold from Sheba be given to him. May the prayer offered for him continually, and may he be blessed all day long. May there be plenty of grain in the land. May it wave on the, on the tops of the mountains. May its crops be like Lebanon. May people flourish in the cities like the grass of the field. May his name endure forever as long as the sun shines. May his fame increase. May all the nations be blessed by him and call him blessed. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wonders. Blessed be his glorious name forever. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Amen and amen. The prayers of David, son of Jesse, are concluded. <laughs> there you go. So, that wasn't that bad, was it? That was interesting his story. He really wrapped it up with how, how Solomon was the richest king who ever lived, and nobody will ever be as rich as he went after that. And tomorrow we're going to finish one Psalm 119, which we started yesterday. It is an an acrostic. And they did the first 11 out of 22 letters. And tomorrow we'll do the other 11 out of 22 letters. And then continue with the story of Solomon, I imagine. So, I'm trying to make sure I did it. So, there you have it. That's day 150 getting interesting. Like I said, Solomon is my favorite person in the Old Testament, okay? Because he was the wisest and he left his wisdom to us to follow. Every day I do uh, one of the chapters in, in the book of Proverbs written by Solomon. And there are 31 chapters and 31 days in most months. So every day I do a chapter in Proverbs in the morning, usually, 
that corresponds to the day of the month. So I'm going to catch up on that. I'm going to do it 24 times until I have them all memorized because wisdom and knowledge is a reward unto itself. So that's today, day 150. Stay tuned tomorrow. We'll start all over again. See you then.